How can you travel as a solo traveler cheaper, better, and on the best cruise lines? Hi, I'm Gary Bemidge. This is another of my tips for travelers. I often cruise solo, and I have learned a whole lot of tips and tricks about how to cruise solo that I want to share with you right now, starting with this one. I often get asked, what are the best cruise lines to go on as a solo traveler? Well, there's a couple of buckets that I think you should look at. First of all, what I think are the absolute best cruise lines for solo travelers? Well, the absolute best are probably two cruise lines, one of which is the Norwegian Cruise Line. Norwegian Cruise Line on their bigger ships and their newer ships have created a whole solo traveler area. Now, these are all inside cabins. So if you're not keen on inside cabins, this may not be for you, but they have a whole area. It's card protected. So only solo travelers with a card can get into the area. You have all these individual studio cabins, and then they have a lounge where you have seating area, you have tea, coffee, snacks. They often have whiteboards and boards where you can start to post things to five people to go on excursions. So Norwegian are really focusing on the solo traveler big time. The other cruise line that looks after solo travelers phenomenally well is really catering for the 50 plus travelers. So Saga Cruises, their new ships, Saga Spirit of Adventure, Saga Spirit of Discovery, they have 20%, 109 cabins on board are solo cabins. All of the cabins have a balcony and you can get various grades. You can even get up to a suite as a solo cabin. Also on board, they have specific events for solo travelers. So for example, they have cocktail parties for solo travelers and they have a meetup every day, normally in the morning and afternoon when the ship is in port. So solo travelers can get together and decide to go off and do excursions together or explore together. So those are probably the two absolute best cruise lines for solo travelers because they really focus on it. Then there's a second bucket, which are cruise lines, which are catering for solo travelers by having solo traveler cabins. Most of the major cruise lines now have solo cabins on their newer ships. The one big exception, certainly at the time of recording, is the biggest cruise line in the world, which is Carnival Cruises, currently don't have solo cabins on their ships. And they have about 40, 50% of all cruise passengers go on a Carnival ship during the year. So they're a really big one not to have it. But all the other lines do. So even Cunard on the entire fleet have introduced solo cabins. Royal Caribbean have it. Holland America on their new ships have solo cabins. So you'll find many of the big cruise lines have solo cabins. The other big exception alongside Carnival is Princess Cruises. They are the fourth biggest cruise line in the world based on passengers, and they don't have solo cabins either. MSC Cruises, which is the fifth biggest cruise line in the world, on their big new ships, they also have solo cabins. So you'll find that a lot of the big cruise lines do have solo cabins, or those you've seen, not all of them. The third bucket of those are cruise lines that don't have solo cabins, but do welcome solo travelers on board. So for example, I've been on a couple of the ultra luxury lines on different cruises where they haven't had solo cabins, but what they have done on certain cruises during the year is they've offered dramatic discounts where you only pay perhaps 10% or up to 25% surcharge. So I've been on Silver Sea, I have been on Seabourn, and I've been on Ponant where they do offer those really small premium discounts. So that's the third bucket is cruise lines that don't have specific cabins catering for you, but they do have big discounts. So those are the best cruise lines as a solo traveler if you want to go cruising. My second tip around how solo travelers can travel cheaper and better and on the best cruise lines is to work with a company, a travel company, that really focuses on the solo traveler. And in the cruise area, there are two that I always take a look at. One of which is more catering probably to the US market, and that's vacations to go. They have a whole section focusing on solo travelers. What they do is they run a whole series of cruises, both on existing cruises or very specific cruises. But what they do is they guarantee that you will pay the lowest price and they will try and match you with other solo travelers, often to share a cabin if possible. But they are a great place to look at if you're looking for solo cruises because they know all the best deals at any particular time. In the UK, there's a company called ROL Cruises and they also have a real big focus on solo travelers. Of course, many other travel companies do have a focus on the solo traveler because they are growing and cruising is growing. But that's the second big tip is work with a travel company that focuses on cruising for the solo traveler. My third tip, of course, is to then sign up for newsletters for different blogs and sites that look at solo traveling more generally. There's a couple of really good blogs, for example, solotravelerblog.com, singlestravelntl.com, solosholidays.co.uk. 
My fourth tip as a solo traveler, and this is one that I really like to focus on if I am traveling by myself, and that's to go on smaller ships, not bigger ships. The reason for that is smaller ships, you have greater chance to meet people, get to know people. People are more likely to talk to you. So it's a bit like being in a small town versus a big city. It's much easier to be integrated. So I always found on smaller ships, you don't get lost in the crowd. And also it's really important because the excursions are a little bit smaller, the events are a little bit smaller, and people just notice you more. They notice you traveling by yourself and they will start to engage with you much more. So that's a big, big tip for me is look at smaller ships. I think you'll find it a massive big difference as a solo traveler. I certainly much prefer solo traveling on smaller ships. Another really important tip is choose the time of year you cruise. As a solo traveler, I recommend you look at slightly out of season, so just the beginning of the season, the end of the season. So you'll find, for example, you know, sort of March, April time, maybe heading into June a little bit, if you're looking at the Mediterranean, or you look at September, October time again in the Mediterranean, and the kind of the equivalents for the Caribbean. The reason for that is you'll find that's when the best deals are. So even if you're going on a cruise line that has a larger surcharge, the prices overall are not going to be as great. Also, you're more likely to find that's when you have deals taking place because the cruise lines find it harder to fill the ship. Also, you're probably going to find there's more solo travelers on board as well for that reason. So looking at the sort of shoulder seasons, almost slightly out of season, is really important as a solo traveler for finding the right cruises, finding the right deals. So for example, I was talking about earlier on the big ultra luxury lines I've been on. I've always done those slightly out of season at the beginning or end of the season because that's when they do those big promotions. If you are a solo traveler and you are looking for a company you like to travel with someone, another thing you could do is travel partnering. That's something that doesn't appeal to me to share a cabin with someone that I don't really know. In fact, I don't even like sharing cabins with people I do know half the time. But there are whole ways that you can meet travel partners. One of the ways to do that is take a look at some of the cruise sites because they do have either forums or areas where you can actually meet people to go on similar cruises with and share a cabin. Some of the ones to look at are like cruisemates.com, cruisetrend.com, silversurface.com, cruisematefinder, and meetup.com, which is more related to the area living in. They'll often have a specific group around solo travelers. So there are ways that you can find people to share a cabin with. I have a whole bunch of tips around things to do once you're on board as a solo traveler. First of those, really, really important, is use Cruise Critic. So go onto Cruise Critic, sign up for the roll call you'll find there. Also find out if they're going to have a meet and greet and mingle session. Those are really great because you can be talking to people on your cruise. They will know that you're traveling solo, so you can also connect with them if there's not a meetup. But on a lot of the cruise lines, there's a Cruise Critic meetup where you can go to that event, you'll see there's other solo travelers, you'll get to know people and can integrate with them. So that's a really big, big, important plus. The second thing is most cruise lines with solo travelers have meetups. So they'll have a meetup at the beginning, often hosted by the cruise director, not always. That's a great chance for you to understand who else are solo travelers. And then you can then, if you click with them, you can then arrange to do things with them, whether it's excursions, go to events, go to the theater, whatever it is. Thirdly, get involved. Go to the various activities, the events, the quizzes, because that's a great way of meeting people. So if there is a little deck games or quizzes or Anything that's going on, go along there. You'll start talking to people because people on cruises like to talk. And it's a great way of connecting, meeting people, and hopefully clicking with people that you're going to get on with. Another really good thing to do once you get on board is make friends with the cruise director or people in the entertainment team. Now, they will often host the solo get togethers, but even if they don't, if you get to know them, they will also help connect you with other solo travelers, but also they'll keep an eye out for you. So if you're coming to an event, they'll always make sure you can get partnered up or whatever. They are a solo traveler's best friend, cruise director and entertainment team. Go on excursions as well, because that's a great way of starting to talk to people, to get they've got the same interests. And I found often I've been on excursions, people just start talking to you as you're going around. And I've made some really good friends on board through going on excursions. Also importantly is about eating. The hardest thing about a solo traveler is actually the evening meal because it's such a big deal. A couple of things I would recommend is actually go for any time dining as opposed to the fixed time dining. The reason for that is when you go on any time dining, you arrive there and say you want to be seated at a table with other people. That way you get to meet loads of different people. And again, you might connect with them. If you're on a fixed dining table, you're always going to be with the same people. And so you're not going to get to meet as many people. So anytime dining, ask us about other people is a really big plus. I've done that 
a lot on solo cruising. I'm not the most sociable person on a cruise and I find that a good way of actually getting to meet people and talking to them. Solo traveling is becoming a huge, huge trend and hopefully these tips and things I've learned have helped you. I have loads more advice and tips about cruising in my videos. So why don't you watch another one of my videos right now?